Hello and welcome back to Homemaking with Joy. I'm Rachel and this is the second week of the 2024 Pantry Challenge. My mom's playing with the kids so I'm quickly going to show you my super easy instant pot lunch. Let's go. I am making instant pot hamburger helper. This is a family favorite, especially a toddler favorite, and I always have the ingredients on hand. It is also a YouTube favorite. This is one of my most popular YouTube videos. I will link it below if you'd like to check it out. I go in detail of how to make this recipe, but it is super simple. I like that it comes together in one pot, doesn't dirty a lot of dishes, and everyone is always happy whenever they see it on the table. I turned my instant pot to the saute function and warmed the bottom, added some oil, and cut that onion to saute in the bottom. I'll add a little salt to draw out that moisture, and salt just makes food taste better. I'll stir it around, make sure it's browning evenly, and then add my meat. The original recipe calls for ground beef, but I don't have any ground beef right now. I have ground venison, so that's what I'll use. It's still slightly frozen, so I'm doing my best to chop it up. I'll add some garlic. I do uh, kind of take a shortcut there and buy the pre-chopped garlic, more salt, and some pepper. Now is also the time when I would add Worcestershire sauce and tomato paste, but I don't have those right now, so I'm just going to skip it. I turned off the saute function, and now I'm grabbing some broth. Again, the original recipe calls for beef broth to go with the beef in the recipe, but I don't have any beef broth right now, so I'm using some turkey broth, and it works out just fine. One of the other things I like about this recipe, it's fairly customizable. I'm making sure there aren't any burnt bits on the bottom and that all of the ingredients are below the liquid level so that I can add the noodles on top. You don't want to stir these around, you just want to flatten them out so everything is touching liquid to make sure that they actually all cook. If you leave any above the liquid, you will just end up with hard noodles. This is what I'm doing. It's time to add the lid and get pressure cooking. I will put my lid on and turn the valve to sealing. If you have an instant pot like this, I will cook the pressure cook button or some people have manual and set it for five minutes. That's all it takes. So the instant pot will register that it's going to cook for five minutes, come up to pressure, cook for those five minutes, and then we will immediately release the steam afterward. Some people like to use a wooden spoon to open the valve to keep them far away from it. Some people are confident just flicking it with their hand. I like to put a towel over the top and then flick it with my hand. All the steam will come out the side of the towel and it protects my upper cabinets from getting all that steam, but it also protects uh, my kids or me from getting steam on us. I'm going to open the lid, but I'm going to use the towel because the lid is now very hot from being covered in steam. And please open the lid away from your face so you don't get the steam in your face either. This is what your noodles will look like when you open your Instant Pot. They're a little clumped up, but as soon as you stir them, they come right apart. And there's the venison in the bottom. The last ingredient is cheese. This recipe calls for shredded cheddar, but I had a mix of cheddar and mozzarella left over from some pizza that we made, so that's what I used. Again, extremely versatile, and it's cheese. You can't really go wrong with cheese. I think you're also supposed to measure how much cheese goes in, but I don't do that either. I just add it until it looks cheesy enough and to my liking. So that always works for me. And lunch is served. Everybody got a bowl of noodles, some carrots, pear, and an orange. My kids are doing their nap time and quiet time, so I am working on dinner. I went shopping in my freezer this morning and found a slow cooker meal, one of the postpartum freezer meals I put together. Um, there's a video on YouTube if you wanna check out all the postpartum meals I made, but we need to use those. We have them to eat, and so I got one out, and this one only takes four hours. So I was able to use my Instant Pot for lunch for the noodles, and they're here cooling. Um, then I got the pot, washed that, and prepped my Instant Pot for the slow cooker function for dinner. We are having, honey sesame chicken I think it's called and then I'll use my rice cooker to cook some rice and I have a bag of frozen broccoli that I will also cook to have with our dinner. So I am sort of a kitchen gadget person if it makes my life easier so to have the instant pot to cook the chicken to have the rice cooker to cook the rice and then just prepare the broccoli makes it super super simple for me and it'll be really yummy and it's all like homemade real food just using the appliances to make my life easier. 
So I'm gonna throw that in the slow cooker and uh, then enjoy the rest of my afternoon smelling honey sesame garlic, honey something. I don't know, I'll look it up and write it down or share it then, but here we go. It's honey sesame chicken. It's written on the bag, thankfully. Also, I wanted to share with my Instant Pot, I have two of the liners, which makes it really convenient to use it multiple times per day. My other liner is currently in the fridge, so I had to wash this one. But having multiple liners helps a lot. And then my husband also got me this glass lid. So when I use it on the slow cook function, I don't have to use the pressure, like big heavy lid. I can use this lid instead, which is great. The directions for this meal say to thaw it, which I kind of did this morning, slow cooker on low for three and a half hours. Then you shred the chicken and put it back in the slow cooker to keep it warm for 30 more minutes. So all of the chicken can um, marinate and finish cooking and then serve it with a rice and vegetable. I really like having these on hand. They come in super handy and um, it already smells good with my face over it. So. Let's get this cooking and then I get to enjoy my second coffee of today during the rest of quiet time and nap time. See you for dinner. It's time to prepare the rice that we will have with our chicken for dinner. I just have white rice here that I'm going to cook. The rice cooker does a great job. We actually got this when my husband and I were in college. Fun fact, he and his family lived in Cambodia for three years as missionaries and they got very accustomed to having rice and so I had to get a rice cooker too so I could cook rice just like them. I washed my rice and now I'm preparing my liquid. If possible, I like to use broth as my liquid instead of water. It gives it more flavor and more nutrition and I have lots of broth in my basement so I'm very happy to use it to make this rice better for my family. My kids can sometimes be picky about the main dish as well but they will eat rice so anywhere I can sneak in nutrition for the toddlers I like to do that too. My rice cooker only has a few buttons. I just turn it on and push white rice and I'm good to go. This is what my chicken looks like in the slow cooker and we are ready to shred it. This is absolutely the best way to shred chicken and I will never shred it by hand again. I'm getting the chicken out of the slow cooker to put in my mixer bowl and I'm going to use the paddle attachment on my mixer to shred the chicken. Check this out. I put the warm chicken in the bowl and I add the paddle attachment and turn it on slowly. I did lose a little bit of chicken out the side of the bowl, but it just shreds right up. It's so simple. Check it out. Just all done in my mixer. It's worth dirtying another bowl to not have to shred that all by hand. It's the best. Now I'm going to take it out of the bowl and add it back to my instant pot slash slow cooker so it can soak up the rest of those juices and keep warm until we are ready to eat. This is what it looks like back in the pot. It has soaked up a lot of the sauce that was left over, which is just delicious flavor. I'm looking forward to it. Moving on to the broccoli. I have some lard here that I put in my cast iron pan. I'm going to melt that and then saute this broccoli. I'm doing it straight from frozen. I didn't thaw it at all. I didn't steam it at all. Just frozen broccoli in the pan with the lard and it cooks up beautifully. There's no problem doing it that way and it does get crispy. I like the brown bits on it and that works great with the lard. Here is my plate for dinner. There were seconds had and I can say it was absolutely delicious. It is January 9th and I picked up groceries today. If you recall, I said I would get milk, eggs, and fruit from the store during the challenge, but you need $35 in order to get free pickup from Walmart, so that's why I added the coffee filters and the avocados which were on sale. So I'll take it. I'm not concerned. Moving on to dinner. Tonight my husband had to leave the house for a church event tonight and the pickup was kind of late so i'm in a rush i am dicing these potatoes really really small so they will cook really quickly they ended up cooking in 20 25 minutes and it worked out beautifully i sort of feel like a broken record showing you me dicing potatoes so i can roast them on a pan for my family but if it's not broken don't fix it my kids love potatoes this way as one of my sons saw me cutting them he said are you making the potatoes we really like and I said, you know it, buddy. If you like them this way, I'm happy to cook them this way. 
why change it if everybody is happy with the way it is? I added some oil. I'm going to add some garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper to season them and throw those in the oven. Again, I was in the hurry. My husband had to be out of the house. So this is the quickest way that I can prepare potatoes. As it turns out, my husband did not go to church this evening because I went downstairs for an ingredient and found that our basement was flooding. It had rained all day long, heavy rain, lots and lots and lots of rain, and it seeped into our basement, filled the sump pit, and was um, going all over the place. So thankfully, I went down there to get the ingredient and was able to notify him. So instead of going to church, which he would have much preferred, he had to bail water out of the sump pit and clean water out of our basement. I'm so thankful that he was willing to do that. It was still helpful that I had just a simple dinner prepared because he was stressed and wanted to get back downstairs to keep cleaning up and the kids were really hungry. So there you saw my potatoes. I have freezer corn that I just warmed up in the oven and these are some sausages that I found in the freezer that were heated up very quickly. Don't be afraid to make your family really, really simple meals on busy days or when you just don't feel like cooking because this fed my family and it worked out great. Hi friends, it is January 10th and I have zero plans for dinner. Not quite true. I have a plan, but I'm not making anything for dinner. As you saw yesterday, our basement kind of sort of flooded from all of the rain. And so we are going to Lowe's tonight to get a new sump pump. We're going to take a family trip to Lowe's and we have a Chick-fil-A gift card that we're going to use too since it's right down the road. So I have a plan. We're going to Chick-fil-A for dinner um, and we are going to pay for it, but we have a gift card. So that makes it a little bit better and I don't have to cook tonight, which is awesome. So I am spending my afternoon cleaning up everything in the kitchen. So it is nice and clean when we get home from Chick-fil-A and my husband and I can just relax tonight. I'm also in the process of filming my... Um, freshly milled yeasted sandwich loaf. So you will see that video as well. I'll link it down below so you can check it out. I had so many questions on it last week that I decided I had to figure out how to film two videos this week. So here you go. There's another video for you to check out. It is the best sandwich bread and I think you'll really like it. So maybe I'll take some photos or videos at Chick-fil-A. Maybe not, but that's tonight's dinner, which is not terribly exciting, but it is exciting for me because I don't have to cook it. It's nice to take breaks every once in a while. Is my home cooked food better for us, more nutritious, better all around? Yeah, probably, but we really like Chick-fil-A. and My kids always eat great when we're there, so I'll take the win for what it is. We had a successful trip to Lowe's. The kids are asleep now. We did go to Chick-fil-A. Fun fact about me, my favorite order, I get it every time, grilled nuggets with fries, Chick-fil-A sauce, and a root beer. That's my favorite. Is it good for me? Eh. Is it delicious? Absolutely. We don't go that often, so I don't fuss about it. But I would love to know, if you go to Chick-fil-A, please write in the comments, what do you order? Should I try something different or just stick with my favorite? I don't know. If you can convince me, maybe I'll try something new. But anyway, I am signing off for the night to finish my root beer and enjoy that and I will see you for tomorrow night's dinner. It is January 11th and I'm starting to get ready for dinner. Tonight we're having spaghetti and meatballs so that will include some homemade pasta, some homemade meatballs that I froze this summer, some home canned pasta sauce, and some freezer corn. Pretty excited at that lineup of how much of it is made from scratch and that we preserved and all those things. So I will show you along the way. I will be using freshly milled flour to make our pasta. I got a really cool pasta machine for my birthday, I think. Um, and so I'll show you how we make homemade spaghetti. The kids really love using that, so you'll probably see their little hands in there helping too. Before I start the pasta, I'm getting the other elements of dinner ready. Again, I have some freezer corn that I partially thawed, and then I will throw in this pan and warm up in the oven with the rest of my dinner. It's just so fast and easy that you can't beat it. And it's so delicious. We also have a family member coming tonight and he's not a huge fan of green vegetables, but corn fits the bill. These are zucchini meatballs that I made over the summer. Uh, they're completely cooked and frozen, so I just need to warm them up. I thought I'd throw them in this dish, add the pasta sauce on top, and again, just warm everything in the oven. If I can use fewer appliances or use them well, I'm more than happy to do that. So throwing everything in the oven was the easiest option for me. 
and the pasta is a bit more hands-on because we are making it so if I can make the other elements simpler that makes my life much easier. I did end up adding some more pasta sauce to this dish and uh, that worked out great. They were really good. Moving on to the pasta. This recipe requires me to be very precise with the flour, egg, and water measurements. So I weighed out my 200 grams of hard white wheat. I will mill that and then prepare the egg and water mixture that will get mixed in. You can see my pasta machine sitting off to the right, and it is such a cool kitchen tool. I've always wanted to make homemade pasta, but I didn't think I had the time or patience to use one of those rollers, especially with kids around. I wanted something faster. And so this, you just put all the ingredients in the machine and it pushes out fresh pasta, which is just amazing. And it's one of those tools that makes me feel really confident in my pantry that as long as I have flour and water, Water, I can make pasta. I do add egg because I think that's better, but bare minimum flour or wheat berries and water and I can make our family fresh pasta. It's so good and so filling and I know that it's nutritious because I'm using this freshly milled flour. I did have to do some experimentation as I honed in this recipe. I don't know of anybody else who uses freshly milled flour to make pasta in this machine. It's kind of a, a niche thing. So when I have the time, I am excited to show you how specifically how I make pasta in the pasta machine with my freshly milled flour. The machine comes with this little measuring cup, so I'm going to add one egg like the recipe calls for. I'm going to whisk that so it's level and accurate. And then I'm going to add my water. So there are measurements here on the side. I need exactly 90, what's the unit? 90 something of liquid. So I'm going to add my water up to that line. Again, it needs to be really precise because we're using a machine here. I can't just feel out the dough. It has to be precise and then I'm going to add that to my flour mixture. Again, here's one of the tricky parts. Because I'm using freshly milled flour, it takes longer for the flour to absorb the water and the egg. All-purpose flour absorbs it much more quickly, and so all of the ingredients are just mixed in the machine, but that doesn't really work for the freshly milled flour. So we're combining it in this bowl, and I will let it sit for four minutes before I put it in the pasta machine. I had a little helper who wanted to stir, and he did well until he decided he was done. <laughs> so you'll see him more later. He really likes to help with the pasta machine. So he did not leave my side the whole evening. My goal with mixing these ingredients is just to hydrate all of the flour. So as long as the flour is touching some liquid, it will absorb some of that and be a better consistency whenever we put it in the pasta machine. Here's what we're working with. My dough mixture has been sitting for a couple of minutes, so I'm going to take the lid off and dump the pasta mixture in, the flour, water, and egg. It's really that simple. This is actually, <laughs> I just said it was simple, but this is the hardest part of the whole process, is pouring it into this tiny little container and not spilling it all over the counter. I cannot tell you how many times I have left flour all over the countertop and all over the machine because <laughs> it spills out of here. So I actually didn't spill this time, and so it's one of the perks of being on camera, I guess. I'm going to add the lid back on, and then there are a couple buttons on top, so I'm going to let my son push the button, and it will start mixing. The pasta machine needs the pasta for about three minutes, and then it will beep and extrude the pasta. That's a big fancy word for push it out of the front. You will see that part coming right now. There are different attachments you can put on the front. I chose the spaghetti attachment because that's what we want for dinner tonight. And so it will just push pasta out until we cut it off. And by we, I mean my son because he does not let me do this part. So you will see him, he'll scrape it off the front. Wait for it. Oh, I tried to help. <laughs> Don't help mom. Scrapes it off the front and then I pull it apart just so it doesn't stick so much. The recipe book says you can toss it in some all-purpose flour so it doesn't stick, but I haven't really found that to be a problem. So we just stand here and watch the pasta come out. We are mesmerized and my son is having the time of his life. I can even walk away and he can pretty much run this machine by himself, which is pretty helpful. And this is one of the reasons that you teach your kids how to do things because then they're capable and I don't have to do it. 
I will pull the noodles apart a little bit. It does, and whenever you push them down, they do kind of smush together. Oh, he wants to show you like I did. There, <laughs> there are the noodles. I love having little helpers. They are so cute. And I like having it on camera too, to keep forever and ever. Come over here. Here we go. That's what the noodles look like. Oops. Oh. I see what you're doing. Oh my god. This is a double batch of the spaghetti noodles. My kids are really obsessed with this pasta. So we were having someone else over for dinner tonight, but my kids could easily devour all that pasta. Time to go into the boiling water. It's just so pretty and so great that it's homemade and so easy. Again, I would not be able to make this homemade pasta if it were more effort than this, but because it's so easy, I'm happy to whip it up for just a regular weeknight meal. Because it's fresh, it only boils for about five minutes. So that's the other thing. It takes a little more effort on the front end to make it, but it boils and cooks really quickly. It plumps up really nicely. It's really flavorful and delicious, and I feel really good about serving it to my family. So here's our dinner, the noodles, the sauce, the cheese, the meatballs, and the corn. We all ate very well that evening. It is January 12th and I am here to share our dinner plan. So my mom and dad actually invited us over for dinner tonight so I don't have to cook any of that stuff. But instead of showing up empty handed, I decided to make some pumpkin muffins. I had some pumpkin puree thawed in the fridge and now is a great time to make the muffins. So my kids are occupied this afternoon. It's a gray, dark day and so baking is a good option. I think I'll add a couple chocolate chips and maybe we'll have the pumpkin muffins for dessert tonight. So I'll show you the pumpkin muffins. I do have this recipe on YouTube if you'd like to check it out. They are the best. As with all of my baked goods, the first step is to grind the wheat. Something unique about this recipe is that it uses soft white wheat and hard white wheat. Hard wheat gives baked goods more structure and soft white gives it more uh, softness. Um, so mixing them together makes the perfect texture for this muffin, especially paired with the moisture of the pumpkin. These muffins really just melt in your mouth. And the, I took them to a couple family gatherings this fall and they were a huge hit. I had a family member tell me they were the best muffins he's ever eaten. And so I'm happy to tell anybody who's curious, these are the best pumpkin muffins ever. I'm doing my best to make the most of my time because I'm cutting it a little bit close to make these muffins before we have to leave the house to go to my parents. Um, so I'm adding the rest of my dry ingredients into the bowl while my mill finishes milling the flour. It uses white sugar and I'll do the brown sugar next. Add all these dry ingredients into this big bowl. I'll combine the wet ingredients in the mixer and then combine them all at the end. It's super simple and I like that it doesn't dirty too many dishes.
We made it to my parents' house on time. My mom served turkey tenderloin, hash brown casserole, and roasted broccoli. It was delicious. Here's one of the kids' plates. They also got some fruit and muffin. Thank you so much for dinner, Mom. It is now Saturday, January 13th, and I'd like to make a bigger breakfast for us on Saturdays. So those hash browns will be going in the oven. The family really likes those. They're quite a treat. And now I'm going to be making an egg casserole. I'm going to crack a bunch of eggs in here and add some milk and seasonings and any mix-ins I like. I used to need a recipe to make egg, egg casseroles like this, but really that's all you need. You don't really have to measure anything and it always works out just fine. So there are the eggs that I threw in there. I'm going to add some milk, I don't know how much that is and it really doesn't matter, and whisk it together well. As you whisk this well, try not to get something on your shirt like I did. That's all I can see in this video. Anyway, I got some meat out of the fridge that needed used. It's some sausage and some ham cubes that I had left over from other meals. So I'm going to add it to this casserole and just mix it in. It is this simple, folks. Don't overthink it. Just toss stuff together and it usually works out. I'm adding some salt here. Lots of salt. I like salt and it's good for me. We need those minerals found in that natural salt. I use Redmond's in case you're interested. Add some pepper. I'm going to add onion powder as well. Ooh, good catch. And in one moment, you will see the garlic powder. Fun fact, garlic is so good. I'm one of those fans of garlic and everything, and I have to rein it back so my family does not dislike it. I'll mix those in and then top it with cheese. You saw the same cheese container earlier in the week whenever I made the Instant Pot Hamburger Helper. I still have some cheese left over, so again, I'm happy to completely empty this container and keep things rotated in my fridge. Can't let anything sit in there for too long and let it go bad because we do not want to waste any food. Because I shredded this myself, it does kind of stick together, so you saw me having to uh, get it apart there, but it did and it baked up beautifully. I also have a couple loaves of bread from baking this week, from doing the tutorial video, and just wanting to keep bread on hand. So we will have this with our breakfast as well. I sliced it and we'll put butter on top to serve with our hash brown patties and eggs. This will probably get turned into a breakfast sandwich. That's a favorite around here, especially one of my toddlers. He really feels like a grown up when he can eat his meal in a sandwich like his daddy does. It's very sweet. Here is our breakfast spread. We all ate well, had full bellies, served with our glass of milk, and we are ready to face the day. My husband and the big boys worked on a project outside and it was cold. So I made them some hot cocoa from this homemade instant hot cocoa mix, and they really enjoyed that as a mid-morning treat. Moving on to lunch, I have this jar of home canned beef stew. This is one of those home canned convenience meals that you just can't beat. So high quality, so delicious, and all you have to do is warm it up. So I'm just gonna put it on the stove to warm up until the whole crew is ready. Here is our light lunch spread. I did add some extra carrots to the beef stew because I had a pint of canned carrots that really needed used. And I decided to serve it with some fresh bread and butter like we had at breakfast, but this really never gets old and the bread needs eaten while it's fresh. I also served it with some of the leftover pumpkin muffins. Finally, moving on to dinner. The last meal that I share with you this week, I needed to cook some more rice, but the container of rice that I keep upstairs was empty. So I ran downstairs to the basement and grabbed my big bucket of rice and I'll fill up my rice cooker from here. And then I will also fill up my rice bucket that I like to keep upstairs for convenient use. I like to keep big buckets of these dry goods so that I never run out. They're extremely convenient and I'm glad I have them. I know of some big families and kids have chores every week that it's their job to refill the smaller containers from the big buckets. And I anticipate as my kids get older that that will be a task that they are assigned as well. Again, I like to cook my rice in broth. So this is some turkey broth that I have from last year and I've canned so much broth this year. So I really need to use up last year's broth before I move on to this year's. We needed just a little bit more liquid in there. So I grabbed some water from the sink and that is our rice. I will let that cook before dinner and prepare the rest of the ingredients. 
Tonight's dinner was taco bowls. So I cooked the rice, I shredded some cheese, I opened a can of corn, I opened a can of black beans, I have some home canned salsa, the leftover roast from a while ago, and some of those avocados that I purchased at the store this week. When the pantry challenge is over, I look forward to adding sour cream on top of mine. If you've made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching and seeing what we ate this week. We thoroughly enjoyed all of it, from Chick-fil-A and eating out to a super from scratch homemade meal, and then to my mom's table. We enjoyed all of it. We enjoy the balance of life, and we're so grateful that we get to live this way with our family, with extended family, and we are just so blessed. So thank you again for watching, and I will have another video just like this next week. Please hit subscribe so you don't miss it. Thank you. Bye.